For more on this new directive by the federal government, let's uh, talk to a lawyer, G.D. Ologo, who joins us live via Zoom from Lagos. Uh, Mr. Ologo, indeed, the National Industrial Court has uh, directed ASU to call off its strike. Uh, but as it is, the latter has now filed a state of execution of this order at the Court of Appeal. What then is the legal implication of government directive to them to open schools and resume lectures? The government is acting on the interlocutory order given by the court. And when you talk about interlocutory injunction, which is an order granted provisionally for a trial, to maintain the status quo pending the hearing of the suit. So the matter is still before the National Industrial Court. So what ASU has done is to proceed to the Court of Appeal to appeal that order and act for a stay of execution. And until a stay of execution is granted by the Court of Appeal, the order of the National Industrial Court will stand. And it is on the platform of that that the government is writing that the lecturers should resume because the lecturer also is expected to respect the rule of law. But for the purpose of argument, when we are talking about status quo here, uh, can the status quo be the fact that ASU has been on strike since uh, February 14, 2022 reportedly, and should continue on strike? But the judge wisely mentioned that the essence of that interlocutory injunction is the protection of national interests to have the students back to school and, of course, to interpret some uh, legal implications of the actions of the ASU. But we all know that the fundamental demands of ASU are still there, which are sustainability of uh, the academic system in Nigeria. So are we now applying a palliative measure mm. to issues that are fundamental? But uh, in the eyes of the law, ASU is expected by that interim order to resume back to the classrooms so while the matter is going on. And All right, Mr. Logo, as it is, uh, if I may quickly butt in, uh, as it is, uh, there appeared to be some level of understanding between ASU and the government, but it appeared that uh, the bone of contention was actually the no work, no pay policy of uh, the government because ASU insists that for the seven months it's been on strike, its members must be paid. Yes, I mean, it's, it's one of the key issues for ASU. And when you talk about no work, no pay, it's a global policy, all right? But the big question is what led to the no work that the government is complaining about here? The spirit of the International Labour Organization, the treaties and conventions, is to ensure equity in the human resources management and during labour matters. And ASU has demand. And it should be instructive to address our minds on some of these demands. As far back as 2009, there were agreements. And you know, it was decided that about 1.3 trillion naira would be put into public universities in six tranches. To, to bring it up to par with the universities we have in some other countries, where even some of our leaders send their children to school. And uh, till date, only about 200 billion naira has been released since 2013. And there have been several promises made. The ASU is still discussing the issue of payment of and academic allowances, you know, despite promises by the federal government. In fact, in 2020, the federal government agreed to pay about 40 billion naira and also promised to release about 22.127 billion and allowances of both academic and non-academic uh, workers of the university to 38 universities. How many of these have been done? Mm. Then the ASU is also demanding for the reconstruction of the federal government and ASU 2009 Regulation Committee. And recall recently that the federal government said that they are not going to negotiate or endorse any agreement that they cannot implement. But at the time, uh, the Minister of State came out to tell the, the world that the federal government cannot go and borrow uh, because of ASU. So mm, when you indeed. put all this together, indeed, Mr. Logo, just you, you realize that the Mr. Logo, just before I let you go, 
I, I get the point you're making, but I'd like you to please quickly react to something. At the moment, there seems to be a crack within the wall of ASU. There is a factional group called KONUA. How much uh, of a force do you think ASU would have at this time to actually drive home its demand? Very quickly. And you, you expect that crack. It's one of the strategy when you talk about collective bargaining. But these cracks in ASU may not deal with the fundamental challenges we have in the academic sector. You know, and we need to picture ourselves on the mirror of the globe. I mean, reportedly in 2017, the vice president of the country as acting president revealed then that about, I think about 129 billion naira is spent annually by Nigerians in UK universities to train the, his children. Though he was making reference to the fact that rich people hardly pay taxes to the government. So when you look at this and the fact that we need to develop local capacity and you benchmark it with the importance of education in having a secured future, then you must be concerned. So here we are now. ASU cannot trust the federal government despite their promises. But the federal government has promised that in the next budget, about 150 billion will be made available to us. But while that promise has been made, the debt servicing of Nigeria surpasses so revenue by about 310 billion naira. You see, so when, when you put, and that is coming from most. the, exactly. So mm. when you put all this together, yes. and in that deficit budget of 2023, about 6.3, we go to all four subsidies. So where will education find the funding, the government find the funding to keep their promises to us? To, so what is the future of education in Nigeria? And I think this should be the concern of everyone but like I said earlier, as we expected to respect the decisions of the court. So let's wait and see what comes out of the appeal in the court of appeal. But whether we go for litigation or we allow alternative dispute resolution, the fundamental issues are still there, which is mm. that we need to revitalization of our institutions. We need to come up to the stage where foreign citizens also bring their children to Nigeria. We earn revenue from it and lecturers are attracted to Nigerian universities, and we can be sure that going into the future, we have an enlightened society All right. that will make us cut off the developed nations of the world. All right, Mr. Olungu, I must sincerely appreciate you for talking to us on TVC News at 7. Thank you again. Thank you. God bless Nigeria.